And our coverage tonight begins in West Africa, where the president of Ghana, Nana Kufo Addo, has expressed worry over a threat to democracy in the ECOWAS sub-region, tasking West African leaders to imbibe the tenets of democracy and embrace accountability to the citizens. Akufo Addo, who was speaking during the opening ceremony of the ECOWAS Parliament High-Level Parliamentary Seminar holding in Maniba, Ghana, with the theme, the role of the ECOWAS Parliament relating the challenges of unconstitutional regime change and presidential term limits in West Africa. He says the region continues to face economic, political, social and insecurity challenges. Thus, the need for leaders to be transparent, promote democracy and good governance. Democracy in West Africa is in danger and we must work even harder to entrench the principles of democratic accountability in the citizenry. My opinion, regional democracy is currently facing three serious threats. Firstly, is the attempted confiscation of democracy by elites who engage in illegal act antics in the manipulation of constitutional rules and the subjugation of the institutions of the republic with the sole aim of remaining in power. Secondly, is the emerging remilitarization of governance with the return once again of the military onto the political scene. Lastly, is the wanton desire to destroy democracy by terrorist groups and armed criminal gangs who seek to establish zones of lawlessness in the absence of freedom in our region. Parliamentarians need to step up the plate and demonstrate the extraordinary leadership that is expected of us. The adage to whom much is given, much is expected applies here. We must embrace democracy as essential to progress and muster the confident speak out against leaders who are solidifying their hold on power against the wishes of the people because we have a moral obligation. We stand at a juncture where the road we choose will dictate the future of our great region. The recent resurgence of military coups threatened to drag us back to an era we have fought tirelessly to transcend. We must firmly condemn the coups in Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Chad, and Gabon, along with the hostilities in Sudan. These actions are a betrayal of democratic principles we hold dear, and we demand a swift return to constitutional rule. And so um, tonight, I'm being joined by an international relations and political analyst, Michael Quadwo in Katia, and he will be talking more on this. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us. And for having me on your news bulletin. Now, the president of uh, Ghana, Nana Kufado, expressed worries over a threat to democracy in the ECOWAS sub-region and has called on West African leaders to imbibe the tenets of democracy and embrace accountability to citizens. What do you make of um, his stance? First, it is a call in the right direction. In the past three, four years, we've had an unprecedented um, fate and unprecedented uh, happenings of military intervention in democratic and civilian governments across the sub-region. It started in Burkina Faso, Mali. We have Guinea, Niger. We've had coup d'etat in Gabon and in other parts of the continent. But the hotspots, the magnet for coup d'etat currently is the West African sub-region. And I believe that any form of call to help leaders on the continent or in the sub-region to be more accountable to their people to prevent any further coup is a call in the right direction. But the call is not just enough. We have to look at the very roots, the foundation, why we are having so much military intervention in the West African sub-region. First, the first thing to attribute to this incessant coup d'etat has been about leaders who decide to arbitrarily stay in power beyond their constitutionally approved term limits and then leaders who are also ruling by the decree or power of the gun, military leaders. And then we also have a major issue of insecurity 
the insurgencies of jihadist attacks, armed groups, rebels, and other terrorist organizations in the sub-region. They've made security in the sub-region so, so precarious that civilian governments and administrations have become so unpopular because they are unable to control the security situation in their respective countries, paving way for military intervention to happen in the West African sub-region. If you do a critical analysis of countries where we've had coup d'etats, there are three foundational uh, issues that contribute to this coup d'etat. Either their leader has overstayed in power, he's a military regime or a military leader who came to power 10, 16, 20 years ago and has refused to leave power, necessitating the need for military intervention. That is the first point, leaders who stay in power in contrary to their constitutional provisions. Okay. Then number two, we are looking at issues of insecurity. If, if you would recall when the coup d'etat in Mali, there have been three coup d'etats in Mali in the last two years. Similarly, we've had two coup d'etats in Burkina Faso. And in all these interventions, the military attributed their reason for the coup d'etat to insecurity in their respective countries and how the central governments had failed to, to, to control these issues of insecurity. Now, Michael, 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 something actually bits me, though. A lot of times... Uh, when African leaders engage in flagrant uh, corrupt practices or refuse to relinquish power, as you've mentioned, the counterparts do or say next to nothing, but then they swiftly come to condemn uh, military interventions. Is that hypocritical on their part to act that way? It borders on the principle of sovereignty. You see, sovereignty has made it so difficult for countries or leaders of other countries to directly comment on happenings within the territorial confines of another country because of the principle of sovereignty, where each country is deemed to have its own rules and regulations and constitutional provisions. Although these countries are members of a supranational entity like the Economic Community of West African States, individual member states may not have the absolute powers to enforce constitutional provisions in these countries. Let me cite you two examples. Uh, we might we might not be okay, Michael. We might not be able to accommodate as many examples. But then let let me just quickly ask you this before I let you go. What should now be the role of ECOWAS in dealing with issues of seatite leaders and ensuring that there's a regime change and democratic institutions are legalized, are strengthened, and there are no forms of interventions and incursions either by military or any other um, external force? Quickly, your response in about a minute. Thank you. ECOWAS should act like a supervisory authority, the big brother that should call everybody in line when they go off limits. That is why I was I disagreed a bit of a bit with people who were so so against the proposed military intervention by ECOWAS in Niger. If the ECOWAS bloc is not able to, to, to overrule or overturn some of these military interventions in the sub-region, it is of course going to serve as an incentive. For okay. so many young military men to pick up arms and overthrow another government. The okay. best way is to issue strong deterrence, and that deterrence can only be enforced when in any form of armed soldiers or young men who pick up arms to overthrow a constitutionally elected government, like it happened in Niger. It's also overthrown to show okay. the whole world that serve as a warning to other soldiers on the continent that military intervention is not the way forward. So ECOWAS must enforce constitutional order by overthrowing military regimes that come to okay. power through the U.S. All right, Michael. Also... Michael, thank you they so much. Thank you so much for your summation on the news. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.